Yo, what's cracking, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Prison Break Raw. I'm your host, the one and only Big JD. Go ahead, give this channel a subscribe, share at least some messages or comments. Hit the like button, hit the notification bell. You know what to do. Free Rodney. It's big news all over the place. International story, national news. Celebrities rearing their ugly face around the corner to jump on the bandwagon in support of this man, Rodney Reed. Convicted of the brutal rape and murder of a young 19-year-old girl out of Bastrop, Texas, Stacy Stites, back in the 90s. And now his case has gotten national celebrity status and review. And a court has stopped his execution that was supposed to be for last Wednesday. Surrounding all of this mounting pressure from the Hollywood celebrity aristocracy like Kim Fakeassian that have gone up in there with the hand up talking about free him, let him out, Dr. Phil's on board, all these other people, let him out, let him walk. What we are going to do on this show is we are not going to state a case for which he should or should not be executed. That's not what we're going to do. What we are going to do is we are going to examine all of the facts surrounding this individual himself, things that are known, Things that are a fact that have been proven in science, in DNA. And we are going to give you the opportunity to make an informed decision if you want to jump on the free Rodney bandwagon or not. Like I said, I'm an independent, objective personality looking at this from the outside. I've had a lot of people try to get me to jump on board with them and sign the petition. I will not. Especially what I know now. And I'm going to go ahead and share that with you. So go, let's go ahead and get into this here. Rodney Reed. Sentenced to death. Currently on Huntsville, I believe, Huntsville's death row in the uh, Texas Department of Criminal Justice for the murder and rape of a 19-year-old girl named Stacy Stites out of Bastrop, Texas. Now, there's a lot of DNA evidence that they found all over this woman's body who... They found her in a wooded area when she didn't report for work. Everybody went crazy trying to find her. They found her body in the woods. It had been beaten, strangled. She'd been sodomized, all that. They found DNA from this dude on her and connected him to the case. Now, initially, he denied even knowing her until they presented him with the DNA evidence that said, hey, man, Found your evidence, your DNA all over. Now what? Oh yeah, we were having a relationship, but it was a secret thing. She wanted it because she was engaged to be married and, and we had to keep it under wraps. Okay, usually that could be a good defense. It's very possible. They could have been having a relationship like that, right? And you would think that that would be enough to say, all right, especially being that supposedly her fiance was some kind of a weirdo himself, right? A lot of strange facts surrounding this case. But it doesn't just stop there, and that's what did it for me. If that's all there was, then I might be inclined to say, you know what, this dude might be getting framed. He might have been having an affair with her, if that's all there was. But there wasn't. There's actually a whole lot more to this story that the celebrity hierarchy, the people that program you how to think, are not telling you. And this is what it is. So, before he was being put on trial for this, he was actually, earlier in, in the 80s, I believe it was 1987, he was charged with the brutal rape, attack, assault, sodomy, on a Wichita Falls woman. Pulled her into the house did all these horrible things or punched her in the face. She identified him. DNA evidence later on linked him to her. And his defense was, as we were having a relationship, she wanted it, right? But she said something that made me mad, so I punched her. That was his defense. It was enough to get him acquitted. What happens next is going to shock and disgust you because it shocked and disgusted me, especially seeing these pictures. These pictures right here. 12 year old girl in the Bastrop area, home in her bed. This man breaks into the house, tries to force his penis into her mouth. She bites it. He gets mad and bites her face several times, hits her, throws her down, and sodomizes her. A 12 
year-old child, mind you, sodomized, beaten, bitten on the cheek multiple times, on both cheeks, right? DNA evidence was later linked to, you guessed it, Rodney Reed. DNA evidence from the previous case linked to, you guessed it, Rodney Reed. But he admitted that he was having an affair with the first woman. What was his defense for the 12-year-old child? Was he also going to say that they were having a secret affair? Regardless if that was the case or not, that makes him a diaper sniper and a sick, twisted weirdo creeping into somebody's house in the middle of the night and raping a child. I got to tell you, if that was my daughter, I'd chop him up into a million fucking pieces, man. They'd never find his ass. They'd never find him if he'd have done that to my kid. But he got off of that case because he was on trial for this capital murder. Now, that doesn't just stop there, everybody. Linda Schuleter pulled into a gas station and got on the phone. And this man who is now identified as Rodney Reed by her was on another phone talking about he needed a ride. She was reluctant to give him a ride. And then he got on the phone and was like, well, it looks like I'm going to freeze to death out here because I can't find a ride. So she feels bad, gives him a ride. She thinks, wow, well, the street is all lit up, Main Street. Don't have to worry about going down any dark road. He was trying to tell her to turn down a dark road. She refused, tried to turn around and drop him off on, a, on the lit, lit up street. He grabbed her and attacked her and was trying to force her out of the car. And when she asked him, what do you want? He says, I want you to suck my dick, basically. The way the news article put it, they said oral sex. But you already know he said to suck the dick. I mean, come on. He's not going to say, I want you to give me oral sex. But this is the, the description of it. I want you to suck my dick. She got away. Linda Schulter did. Ran to a car. They later found Rodney Reed at the same gas station. Did a photo lineup of him, and she identified him. This is what led him... This is what uh, put, put him on the Stacey Stites murder case. Consistent with a lot of other things, right? Just the things that he said, the things that he was going to do. And the DNA evidence for all of this pointed to Rodney Reed. Now, either this man is the victim of, of the worst case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time, all these different times, and his DNA just magically just exploded into the atmosphere and landed on every woman within a... 100 mile radius of the Bass city of Bastrop and he's being framed the 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 celebrities are surrounding saying that this is a, a big right wing conspiracy and there's no evidence to support that they're trying to say that one of the cops in one of these cases has some kind of weird shit going on and oh it has to be the fiance because he got caught up in some kind of kidnapping case later years later right so it has to be him and then for him to say that she wanted it that we were in a relationship, both of these different women, right? Isn't that a classic case of what a rapist always says? You've heard it a million times. The rapist will always say she wanted it. She wanted me to do that to her. That's always their defense. That's a classic textbook, serial, psychologically disturbed, tree-jumping, seat-sniffing rapist would say. Now, Stacy Stites had been sodomized, the woman in Wichita Falls as well, the 12-year-old girl, all this DNA points to this man. You would think that it'd be case closed. Getting ready to execute him as, if they, sh as they should, if of course he's the one that did that. But the celebrities and the politicians and all the rest of them have thrown their hat into the ring in support of this man right here. In light of all of these scientific DNA facts, surrounding all these other women. This is an insult to the victims to the victims of these cases that were never tried. They were like, well, why should we try it? He's going he's gonna to be you know, convicted and, and sentenced to death. So they never tried the 12-year-old girl's case or Linda Schulter's case or, you know what I mean? And who knows how many other victims are out there that have refused to step forward. What I honestly believe that is going on right now is a case of social justice gone wild. It's just as simple as that. I mean, they're blaming everybody. I'm, I'm surprised they're not blaming Donald Trump for this. I'm pretty sure that's coming next. But why? Why this man right here with all of this other evidence? I mean, it, it's got to make you wonder what is really going on in this case. It doesn't make any sense to me. 
out of all the people that are sitting on death row, out of all the people that could possibly be innocent, you've chosen a man that has several pending cases against him right now for the same case with DNA evidence linking him to him. Why would you get behind this? Even if he didn't kill Stacy Stites, he should get a bullet put in his head for what he did to the 12-year-old girl. Look at the pictures. Look at what he did. Look at the woman in Wichita Falls. Look at the, the, the PTSD that's on the face of, of Linda Schulter that she has to live with every single day of her life now. We live in a day and age where it's supposed to be about me too. We're supposed to believe the victims. Unless, of course, it has to do with Rodney Reed and then the woman's a lying sack of shit, right? That's what these people are doing. I mean, why not the guy in, in, in what's his name? Scott Peterson or whatever, the guy that's in Colorado that supposedly chopped up and killed his wife and kids. And they got video of him loading him up into his truck. I mean, shit, why don't we get some behind him and, and support him and say that maybe he was taking a bunch of aluminum cans down the recycling center to recycle them that morning? How do we know those were bodies? This is a conspiracy. But they don't. The evidence was written all over his face. He's busted. The evidence is written all over Rodney Reed because the DNA is pointing to all these different cases. I cannot get behind somebody that has this much drama surrounding him, right? This many cases going on. If it was just him, Stacy Stites, that's it. Possible, you know, lover's triangle with the with the 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 fiance involved, maybe we could look at him. But there's so much more going on to this case than just that. I will never sign any petition or anything to save this man. Because of what I know. Because I did the research. And all I'm doing is providing you with the research so that you can make an informed decision yourself. And I think that I've done that. You know, I have to be the bad guy in all this and take the road least traveled. Not jumping on the bandwagon and supporting some shit that I don't agree with. This has nothing to do with criminal justice reform. This has nothing to do with justice. This is simply something that is out of control and is being exploited for God knows what reason. But to me, I think it's sick and twisted. Because this man has a whole bunch of open cases and you want to let him out? His, the blood is on your hands if you choose to go down that road. If they let him out and they squash everything and another woman's body pops up, that's on, your, on all you guys that supported this. My conscience is clear because I honestly believe that, that he's probably guilty for all of this stuff. I mean, DNA evidence either exonerates you or frees you. There's no gray area to it. As simple as that. It's like a fingerprint. If you got a fingerprint on a, on a gun, you got a smoking barrel and everything like that, and you got DNA all under your fingers, and, you know, the, the black powder residue and everything like that, chances are you probably pulled the trigger. I mean, believe what you want, but look at the facts. Look at those pictures that I showed you. Ask yourself, is this really the case we want to make a poster child about for criminal justice reform or justice or reform or death row reform or whatever when there is DNA evidence all over the place on this guy? I mean, goddamn, we might as well just, you know, have gotten behind and said that Jeffrey Dahmer was innocent then and Ariel Castro was innocent or, or Ted Bundy. I mean, all these people said the same thing. The women wanted it. They wanted me to do that. Same thing that this guy's saying. It's all sick and twisted and it's crazy. Never will I get behind it. And I don't care if I'm the bad guy. I could get all the hate mail in the world. I can get people to, to, to disassociate themselves with me or whatnot. I'm always going to speak my mind because I'm not afraid to call it like I see it. I call bullshit on this one right here. And I would strongly urge all of you that is listening to this to go out and research the facts for yourself. Don't just take my word for it. I'm just the messenger on this side of it, objective on the outside looking in. Prison break raw, uncut, uncensored, no holds barred, not sugarcoat, not politically correct, all up in your face, slapping you with that dick of reality, and I'm out.